So I just got back from Asia and I've been extremely jet lagged, but there is some big news about the Sony a7R5 and I figure I have to go into it right now. So this is coming to us via Sony Alpha Rumors. They've been kind of back and forth with their coverage about this camera and about the specs of this camera. That being said, this is getting closer. And as it gets closer, if history repeats itself, he usually gets a lot more accurate with time. And now, well, supposedly there is gonna be a brand new 61 megapixel sensor. In the past, he said it was gonna be a new sensor, but then kind of backtracked when he heard it was gonna be 61. I think he was maybe thinking that it's a 61 megapixel sensor that is the same one and they're just putting all the different stuff into the new autofocusing system and the new processor. But now he is saying that he's 95% sure that it is gonna be a new 61 megapixel BSI sensor with better light gathering performance. And so for me to hear that is kind of what I was hoping for and what I've been talking about for a while now, hoping that if they are bringing a new sensor to this thing, then that means it's probably gonna be their stacked sensor technology that they talked about maybe i think it was about six months or so ago where they came out with a statement saying that they had a breakthrough in a different type of stacked sensor where it essentially doubled the light saturation level of the sensor so at least theoretically if this this is going to be a 61 megapixel sensor then the low light capabilities will be somewhere around like a 30.5 megapixel sensor so with this latest rumor and with the way he words it I think this is pointing to this being finally a new generation of sensors and this new technology that's coming out. I also think that this new type of technology is what's gonna allow cameras from Sony to maybe be putting in 8K and things like that, even a Sony a7S IV if they have that later on. If they have something like that or FX3 Mark II where they wanna keep really great low light performance and still add higher megapixels so you can get higher resolutions. The other thing that's gonna be awesome about this being in say the Sony a7R5 is the fact that it's a 61 megapixel sensor. And one of the downsides about the Sony a7R4 was the low light capabilities. Well, it was good for a 61 megapixel sensor, but it, it still wasn't great. Now quickly going over some of the other specs, they do say it's gonna be a new Bion's XR processor. I don't know if it's gonna be a, a newer Bion's X processor compared to say the Sony a7S III or the A1, or this could just be giving that new processor to the a7R5 considering it wasn't an a7R4. So I'm not really sure about that. We will, I guess, see soon enough or maybe we'll get even more information. They say it's gonna have a brand new autofocusing system, some kind of AI deep learning, which sounds pretty nuts. Uh, at the same time, it has great autofocusing performance already. So I wonder if by them adding like AI, it's just kind of like a marketing buzzword. But I expect this to have some great autofocus like all the other Sony cameras. And supposedly what this AI will allow you to do is to have different type of trackings for different type of objects, whether it be you know trains and planes and all that different type of stuff. All the things that maybe like the OM Digital came out with or the Nikon Z9 said they could track like seven or eight different types of stuff. Maybe we'll be getting that in this camera as well. This will have 8K cropped in at 24. I think it's gonna wind up being a 30. They're also saying it's maybe a 30 minute limit uh, with no overheating. So I wonder if, if they were kind of switching it up and they're saying that there's no overheating at 30 minutes or if they're actually gonna put a hard stop on it. I think it would be a little odd and kind of regressive for them to do that. So we will have to see if that actually turns out to be the case. Uh, supposedly this will have 4K 60 with no crop. I don't know if it's gonna be the full sensor layout and it's gonna be downsampled from whatever that would be like 9K, which would be pretty crazy if they had downsampled 9K to like 4K. But if I had to guess, more likely it's gonna be doing some form of pixel bending like the A1 did. And from all the tests that I heard about, the A1 4K, even though it was pixel bending, was a fairly great high-end version of pixel bending. So we'll see how it works out. If I had to guess, that's the way they're gonna go, but fingers crossed that it's at super downsampled 4K60. This is gonna have uh, s -Cine tone, which kind of no surprise, they've been adding that around everywhere. I think one of the biggest things that we still haven't really heard about is this is gonna be a dedicated picture camera first, we would think. 
but we hadn't heard very much about the actual photography specs. So how fast is this camera gonna be? And I think it matters because most people who are getting this camera is gonna be more of a photo centric person first. So I, so I think it's gonna be important for people to start hearing about the actual photography specs of this camera. That being said, it's also reportedly gonna have a fully articulating screen, which means maybe Sony is gonna start catering more towards video shooters with this camera as well. I know some people will be disappointed in that. I'm more of a video person myself, but I can understand people who are wanting this as a stills camera first. A lot of them don't actually like a fully articulating screen. I would personally like to see them do something like the Panasonic cameras do where it kind of flips down and then also flips over. I think that would be a great middle ground for a lot of people to be able to have kind of the best of both worlds. Another cool feature of this camera is supposedly it is going to have a new type of pixel shift technology, which is supposed to compensate for movement in the photo. Now, it sounds like to me that maybe that's kind of dealing more with computational photography, not that it isn't already in there somewhat, but if they're actually able to compensate for movement, it's not just gonna be the movement of the camera that's really been the problem with pixel shift. It's also the movement of like the, the trees with the wind or if there's an animal or something like that moving in your shot, then there's always been a blurring effect. It's not just the fact that it doesn't work well handheld. So I do wonder if maybe part of this new AI system, they actually are able to take out the movement and actually have a really solid pixel shifted uh, picture that would be super cool if they're really able to do something along those lines this also supposedly has eight stops of ibis so we'll see that's supposed to be internal i don't know if it's going to be like you know have a little bit of a digital stabilization as well that gives you that full eight stops which sounds pretty crazy and the ibis has been kind of a, a sore spot for sony cameras for a while i think their digital active stab seems to work pretty well hopefully this will not have the same wobbling problems that canon has had in the past because canon's ibis has been fairly great other than the fact that you kind of get that wobble when you walk if they're actually able to bring in eight stops of ibis and remove that wobble that's gonna be very impressive because a lot of people have said that they weren't gonna be able to do that because of the smaller mount size. Well, it looks like maybe they've figured this thing out. So I'm pretty excited about this camera. Supposedly it's gonna be announced, I believe it's uh, October 26th. So we're coming up on that fairly soon. Maybe there will be some new news that comes out about it between now and then. If you wanna stay up to date, be sure to subscribe and like this video. And until next time, peace.